something a little bit different for you uh, now. We are still in isolation, unfortunately. And we occasionally do the odd different thing on the, on the channel as opposed to doing the films that we do every week. So this week, uh, we have decided to look at film posters and our favourite film posters. So I'm going to hand it over to Simon and he can go with the first one. My first one is Robocop. The original, obviously, for 1987. We've spoken about the poster briefly when we talked about the Arrow release a few months ago. Because there's a little documentary about someone who like collects loads of Robocop memorabilia and he has this massive poster. And in that, they talk about how it's basically a photo that's sort of airbrushed. But apparently, it's not. It was actually a painting. The painting was based on a photo, but it was actually a painting. It wasn't a photo that was touched up. So it's actually by a guy named Mike Bryan. They actually made some prints of his original painting, which when you look at it, it you know you can tell it's a painting. For the theatrical poster, they boosted some of the colours. They highlighted a bit of it. I mean, it does look quite different. His his the colours on his were a bit more muted. So yeah, I, just, I mean, I just love it because well, I love the film obviously. But I think it's just an iconic poster. It's so simple. It's not filled with loads of stuff. It is literally just. Robocop getting out of his car and he just looks awesome <laughs> just he looks so like the kind of cop you don't want to annoy no exactly and it is you're right it's a fantastic poster and you know he's the... not he's not you know a lot of these action movie posters they'll, you know they'll have their guns out they'll be shooting at something or, and there'll be explosions going off there's none of that there's no he's gun literally no there's no gun no he's just getting out of his car but yeah. it's just I don't know, it, it, it just, I don't know, it's just amazing, it just looks great. And it's just, uh, the colours are just, I love the colours in that poster, it's so it's so slick, it's such a, it's, a, it's an amazing, I mean, and the airbrush effect is an incredible effect anyway, you know, album covers that have airbrush technique, it, it, well, on album covers they tend to always be like progressive rock albums from the 70s, always had the kind of the airbrush look and it always looks great and no I think it's a I think it's a really great poster I mean I also love the Robocop 2 poster as well I think that although it probably you know it's it's quite close to it it's where he's sort of coming through a hole in a wall so it's got almost a similar pose and that one is more obvious that it is a painting but the first one definitely definitely the best and, and definitely a favorite cool nice choice I like it now my first choice so this is a film that well, I've seen the film it's 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 a good film but I just I really like the poster and that's Deliverance uh, the John Voight, uh, Burt Reynolds film, uh, obviously, every, it, well, hopefully you know Deliverance. If you don't go out and watch it, it's it's a re it is a great film, but I just think the poster is really cool, and it was designed by. Uh, so in fact, two of my posters are designed by this man, a man named Bill Gold. I've liked his work for a long time, and he will have he will have designed many posters that you all know. Uh, his first poster was Casablanca, way back with Humphrey Bogart, and then he works right up until I think it, well into the eighties he was making posters. Uh, he's done some extraordinary work. One thing you notice with a lot of his posters, especially in like the 60s and 70s, he'd have like this quite strong design. And then like in the corner, he'd have like a scene from the movie. And he did that quite a few times. Uh, he also did The Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the remake of that, which is a great, a really great what, poster. The, the 70s one. The 70s one, 78 yeah. one, yeah. Such an iconic poster that. But the one thing I really like about Deliverance, is you've got the water and then the shotgun and then the little boat at the top. It's, it is Jaws. It's the Jaws poster. But in Jaws, obviously, you've got the shark instead of the gun, and then you've got the woman swimming instead of the, 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 the boat. And the Jaws one was designed by a man named Roger Castell, and obviously uh, that was after Deliverance. So a mm. little bit of uh, homage maybe going on there. So, yeah, my next choice is Octopussy, the Bond film from 1983. Possibly not the best Bond film. <laughs> <laughs> it's not... It's got some good stuff in it, but the poster I think is awesome. I mean, there, there are a lot of great Bond posters. I mean, these days I think they're quite dull. To be honest, for the Grant Daniel Craig era, there's just not a lot going on on them. I mean, that's the same for a lot of posters these days. To be honest, the sort of poster art is kind of it's kind of disappeared a bit. And it's all you know, it's a lot of it is photos now and obviously Photoshop. And it's just not not as interesting. Yeah, it was done by Dan Goose. Also did a View to a Kill and Moonraker. They're all, I mean they're all great, but I think this one I just like it because of the arms obviously. Octopus. He's given Maud Adams eight arms, all coming round Roger Moore, holding different things like a knife and a, a Fabergé egg and things like that from the movie. You know, some of the Bond posters are a little bit, you know, lots of flesh on display. <laughs> Yeah. it's not so much of that she's flashing a bit of leg but apart from that there's variations where it's just the two of them and there's other ones where there's stuff you know stuff from the movie happening in the background and there's a the little plane that he flies that's swooping in front of them I quite like the one where it's just them um, nice and clean 
So my next one is Rosemary's Baby. It's such a famous poster, it's a very iconic poster. For me, it's just so haunting, that poster. Obviously, Palant, Roman Polanski's film, Rosemary's Baby. So it was designed by Philip Gipps, and he also designed the Alien poster. It's, it's quite similar, he's got this iconic egg, the, obviously the egg in, in that one in the, middle of the, in the middle of the poster, and in this one you've got the, the pram. Which is interesting, because if you know the film Rosemary's Baby, that pram only features in the last like few frames of the film. But it's such a... Terror. It's such a like ominous piece of artwork that poster. It do, it doesn't tell you much, but it tells you enough that, yeah, yeah. that there's something not quite right about this film. There's a really interesting quote that I found. The the last poster I, was Bill Gold, and the next one I'm going to choose was Bill Gold, and he said when you're designing film posters, we try not to tell the whole story. We try to tell a minimum amount of a story because anything more than that is confusing. Which I thought was really interesting. You know they that. Obviously, the film is obviously the, the thing that they're trying to sell. But the poster's got to be eye-catching. I mean, any, any advertising or design has to be eye-catching, and it's got to get you like that. It's got to hook you in straight away. In the 80s in particular, a lot of films, particularly our sci-fis and things like that, had the most amazing posters, and then they would translate, obviously, to the video boxes that you would, you know, you'd go into the video shop, and they would just immediately draw your eye because they were amazing. The films in the boxes might have been complete... <laughs> trash <laughs> but some of the worst films had some of the best posters that would just immediately draw your eye I think wow that looks amazing so I've chosen one that's, that, that is also a very good film well if you like I'm sure there are people that don't like Rosemary's Baby I also love a lot of these covers because they're big I mean you've so Rosemary's Baby's great because you've got so you've got the top of the, the top of the sc- uh, poster is green and in the middle section is black the darkness with the pram and then underneath that where the title is it's just white and it's very minimalistic very simple typography, you get this amazing picture, which is, again, it's a little bit like a record cover. And, I mean, I'm, I'm someone, as you are, who loves music, and I spent, you know, much of my youth buying records simply for the artwork and not, you know... And so, again, sometimes you'd get it home and you'd be like, what the hell is this? Third and final one is Army of Darkness, the Sam Raimi, sort of Evil Dead 3 from 1992. That was designed by John Bolton, who's a British comic book artist. He also did the artwork for, like, the comic book movie adaptation of, of the film. I think a lot of his artwork is, some of it's quite photorealistic. There's a lot of posters similar where there's a sort of woman draped around the leg of a muscly guy. Like there's a Conan poster, I think, that's like that, isn't there? And various other sort of cheesy fantasy 80s movies. So it's definitely sort of going for that vibe. But it's, you know, because it's Army of Darkness, it's a little bit more tongue-in-cheek. Bruce Campbell isn't quite as ripped as that. (laughs) Is that in real life? Whether he asked for those extra muscles or uh, whether it was a bit of creative license, I don't know. But, um, you know, he's he's certainly toned, but I wouldn't say he's quite rippling with muscles like he is on the poster. But obviously, yeah, I mean, rather than holding a big, massive, ridiculous sword like Conan the Barbarian, he's got his chainsaw in his hand and you got the little miniature ashes attacking him at the bottom of his foot and you got the deadites at the bottom and the castle in the background. It looks epic, but it also kind of gives the impression of being a little bit tongue-in-cheek as well. Yeah, in fact, the, the little the little ashes and his foot are on the tyre of his car, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Because his, yeah. his car, the car is like flipped upside down or as it was at the beginning of that film. Yeah, no, it is a great poster. I love that poster. It's, again, it's got some great colours. The colours are just exceptional, you know, with the kind of the, the red from this kind of, the deadites being this kind of like almost fire and, and mm. just heat coming up below them, the, that red. And then that amazing title, Army of Darkness in Yellow. So I think that's a really great poster. Yeah, like you said, it's, it's like those kind of, a lot of those old, I mean, even you look at the old Star Wars posters, the, the kind of Indiana Jones with the, all the all the characters on the front of the poster. Yeah, I mean, there, there of course there is a Star Wars poster where Luke stood there and, and, and Leia is sort of draped around his legs, so, which is a bit weird for brother and sister, but you know, hey, <laughs> hey-ho. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, so my final choice is the poster to The Exorcist. Personally, the film is my favourite. I think it's my favourite horror film. I, I mean, I find The Exorcist absolutely terrifying. I can't watch it. I've only watched it three times. I literally, it's to me, it's just. But I did watch it when I was like eleven for the first time. I had a dodgy videotape of it, and it took me like two nights to watch it because it was so. T- and I had a tiny TV. I had this like, you know, tiny like box TV which was in colour. It was an old, an old Sony one. It just terrified the life out of me. So this one was also designed by Bill Gold, as uh, spoke about uh, with who did Deliverance. And this one was quite interesting. So he was kind of given in his brief, he was told by William Friedkin, he's told it mustn't have any religious connotations. Obviously, the film has got a lot of religious sim- uh, symbolism in there and, and imagery. Um, and so he had to be a little bit more clever with his what, how he designed it. 
But there was this scene in the film, uh, which itself was inspired by a painting called Empire of Lights um, by René Magritte. I don't think the painting itself is supposed to be eerie. It's free, it's a very eerie... Do you know it yourself? No. Well, in the middle of the, the image, you have like a house and there's a lamppost with a light on. And up in the left-hand corner is a, is a window. And there's this very prominent tree in the painting as well. So it itself is not a... a a haunting image, or well, it's a haunting image, but it's obviously not about anything haunting. William Friedkin was inspired by that painting to obviously put that scene into the film, and then Bill Gold used that for the poster of the film. But it's just terrifying because literally all it is is Father Merrin going to the house and this light coming out of the window. But it's all it's telling you is don't go into that house. And that's all it is. And I just think it's a, it's such a simple, iconic, and again, similar to Rosemary's Baby. It's just three colours on there. So you've got the purple for the, for the title, and then the black, and then the white of the lights coming out. I was going to say that the light is quite unnatural. A, because obviously it's a massive like beam of light coming out of the window, which is not normal. But also, some some variations of it, the, the light is sort of has a sort of yellowy tinge to it, which again... I mean, I guess bulbs tend to have a yellowy glow, don't they? But it's not quite, it's not a normal shade of light, is it? I don't know, it, it gives it a kind of slightly off feeling to it, where it's not yeah. quite a natural light that's that's occurring. I don't know, it's, it's difficult to sort of describe, but um, but yeah, it, if it was just a, I don't know, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's my take on it. I agree, there are, I mean, obviously there are different versions of, of, of yeah. these posters, but I just think it's it it's just... It doesn't. It doesn't tell you anything other than there's something bad in there. Yeah. Something really, really <laughs> bad. Great. Well, that was my final design on that one. Design poster. Some good picks there. Nice little discussion there. Uh, we should probably close this off now because otherwise we'll go on for too long. Let us know which film posters are your favourites as well. We'd uh, we'd like to know. Have a discussion down in the in the comments. Yeah, hit the subscribe button there. Um, don't forget to push that bell for notifications. There's some other videos to check out over here. Come and find us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram and come back soon for another video.